you'll excuse me coughing here. What do you, uh, what do the, uh, the uh, Eagles go out? Number one? Hey, you can see that when he came off the brakes, the airplane actually lurches. And with all that power, it's not making an awful lot of noise. The noise that you're hearing is not the noise of the engine, it's the noise of the fans. The turbo fans of the engine turn. And you notice one other thing? It's smokeless. And if you don't think the people in the Charleston, South Carolina are happier to have these airplanes there, than they happier than they were with the C-141s that used to live there, uh, you know, you just can't imagine the difference. What is all this? What is this? Uh, is it air raid? An air raid? Wait a minute, hold it. I didn't know anything about an air raid. I didn't know an air raid when I came here. Side, and here they are. 
paratroop is exiting the tailgate and the, and the uh, paratroop door at a thousand feet above the ground level. Paratroopers jumping combat equipment, which includes their allies, all purpose lightweight individuals carrying equipment back. Personal weapon in their M1950 uh, weapons carrying case, the LGE load carrying equipment so they can be ready to fight as soon as they hit the ground. At 200 feet above ground level, the paratroopers will lower their Alice packs and weapons on a tether. Obviously, that's to lighten the load on their legs when they land. Let the equipment land first, then they land next to it. And you can see all those lowering straps are down. I got two jumpers over here that are just now deploying. They're at the, uh, the Alice packs over on the left side. That looks good. And they're touching down. 100 feet above the ground, these jumpers have turned into the wind, preparing to land. They don't land standing up, and they're traveling 22 feet per second or 15 miles an hour when they touch the ground carrying their equipment, which can weigh up to 150 pounds. Airborne Red Horse. Airborne Red Horse will quickly do an assessment of the runway with SPS to ensure aircraft can land with follow-on equipment. The C-17 Master 3, the just released the paratroopers, uh, will in just a few moments be conducting a short runway tactical landing on the runway. And I want you to look out to the left side here as the C-17, you can see them out there in the haze. Man, that was perfect name for dropping in Iraq, the mother of all bombs, the Moab. All right, we're watching, I see they're going to bring this airplane right up in front of you, but uh, because we uh, don't want to expose the men on board, any more than absolutely necessary to uh, any uh, nasties that might be hiding out in the bushes with their RPGs. Uh, let's watch as uh, they're going to stop this thing out in front of us and they're going to reposition it to bring off the equipment. And you see there from uh, Air Mobility Command in Charleston, you see the uh, sign up on the tail of the aircraft and the 437th airlift wing. And they're making a turn. You notice they're still, they're still going away from us. Oh, that won't last long. Now the Golden Knights are just taking off. The uh, United States Army Parachute Team is taking off. But they have positioned the C-17 so they can uh, offload their equipment. Now you know we just put out a whole bunch of jumpers out of this airplane. And we're also carrying their equipment. And this whole time, the professionals of uh, AFSOC 21, uh, 21st Special Tactics Squadron have been quietly performing their duties, controlling the airborne operation from the drop zone. Without their assistance, this airborne operation would not take place. Backbow, and something else is coming out after that. 
all painted in desert camouflage. Oh, oh, man. And there's still more coming out. We got another bucket loader, and this is on uh, jack tracks. There can't be anything more after that. That's got to be it. There they go. If you're going to watch the uh, the crewman from the 437 airlift wing get on board, and uh, I believe they're going to yeah, they go. They're going to lift the ramp up, and while they're doing that. If you look over to the left side, they're going to uh, start this crater repair. They've got the two skip loaders out there, and uh, that, uh, I don't even know what the technical term is for it. It's like a dump truck on treads. Meanwhile, we're going to get the C-17 to devil out of the way. This demonstration of crater repair is to show the capability exists with the personnel and equipment to open a damaged runway. This type of repair is essential in order to establish an airhead. As soon as the repairs are complete, the C-17 and C-130 aircraft can land and bring in supplies and equipment to move the flight to the enemy's doorstep. And here comes one of the C-130s right now. An average bomb crater will be 25 to 30 feet in diameter and about 10 to 15 feet deep. The first thing it's done is the concrete lip of the damaged crater is removed the material around the hole is pushed back into the crater and compacted, and whatever material is near the area is dug up and placed in the hole until it's flush with the existing concrete runway. The material is placed in six-inch layers and compacted to specified requirements. When the crater is finished being repaired, it can withstand 50 takeoffs and landings of a fully loaded C-17, and if the crater repair is covered with a fiberglass mat, fighter aircraft can take off and land as well. Airborne Red Horse and the A-20th Security Forces Group can uh, accomplish all required tasks in total darkness using night vision goggles. Other tasks that Airborne Red Horse and the A-20th Security Forces Group are required to do is assess the runways, taxiways, and parking ramps for serviceability, assess infrastructure, develop bed-down plans, provide security for personnel on the ground, and develop the transition plans for incoming forces. And we actually saw this at Baghdad International. They had uh, actually destroyed a number of airplanes in an effort to deny us the use of their ramps. And uh, that was, like they say, no big deal. They went in, cleaned them out, cleaned the airplanes out, smoothed the ramps, and we were using it in something like three days. Airborne Red Horse, the 820th Security Forces Group, and the 21st Special Tactics Squadron provide a robust capability that senior Air Force and DOD leaders have at their disposal when the call comes.